Now we're going to talk about the condition category around anesthetic foot. What that means is the name suggests just like when you uh, have an anesthetic so that you can uh, have an operation, the anesthetic foot uh, is not, uh, has lost all sensory sensation. You might think, well, that's great because now I don't feel any pain. I can wear any, you know, any shoe I want and I can cram my foot into something really lovely. Uh, but uh, that's not the way it is. Pain is your best friend when it comes to your foot because it tells you when you're hurting yourself. If you don't know when you're hurting yourself, you will continue to do it and then you can easily lose your foot or lose, have an amp amputation. Um, Diabetes uh, has about 15% of people with diabetes end up with some form of amputation. The main reason, uh, one of the main reasons, is they get what's called peripheral neuropathy. That means the extreme edges of their feet, uh, the periphery, uh, lose all feeling. And so they're not aware of you know, when they're damaging themselves. There are other reasons why uh, diabetes is so dangerous, but that's a big one. The other uh, kind of anesthesia comes through multiple sclerosis, MS, and this is where the sensory nerves are still active, but there's a lot of noise going on. The disease is affecting the brain stem, and there's all kinds of feelings of, uh, of uh, I'm, I'm told, the sensations as if things are crawling on you, that is confusing the actual sensory perception of what's going on with your feet. That makes you very unstable because uh, if you think about it, if you don't know where your feet are, how are you going to balance? How are you going to walk? You know, uh, if you step on something, you know, slightly crooked, uh, you know, a stone or something that uh, is slightly uneven, uneven ground, you can't balance yourself because you don't feel the uneven ground and next thing you know you've fallen over. So how do we deal with this problem of having a lack of sensory perception? Well, one way is when we're doing bespoke orthopedic for such a person, whether it's MS or, or uh, another, uh, you know, direct anesthetic, is to use a monofilament. This is a 10 gram monofilament and so you push it out until it locks and then um, you ask the patient to close their eyes. I can feel, uh, you know, every time the 10 gram monofilament goes into my skin, I can feel exactly where it is. What you find with somebody with peripheral neuropathy, if you manage this their foot, and you say, say yes every time you can feel it, you go in like this, and then yes, 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 yes. And they literally think that you weren't doing anything that you started when you got up here. Um, and um, in fact, people can have surgery on their lower foot with peripheral neuropathy without having an injection. So that's how severe it is. Usually you've got feeling in this area. And certainly with multiple sclerosis, one of the strategies is to actually make sure the person knows that they're held where they are held. Uh, so the skin isn't necessarily that fragile. Uh, it's important that the person knows where their foot is. So if you give good containment and support here with a broad heel, and particularly with MS, they know where their foot is, and so they can feel when they've landed on uneven ground. They know when their feet are striking the ground and how they're standing. And that's so important for balance, particularly with MS, where everything has got this noise, a sensory noise on top of it, and, and they can fall over so easily. Uh, it's tragic to see. Uh, so one of the things we can do with peripheral neuropathy is to take a cast of the foot, similar to what we did with the chronic tissue swelling and with the fragile skin, and take a cast, nice soft EVA, take a cast of the foot and then carve it into an orthotic so that, uh, again, we've got full contact around the underside of the foot. And this means that we can hold the foot more firmly than we otherwise would. And remember, with uh, particularly, well, with MS and, and, but certainly with diabetes, 
the, the peripheral neuropathy or the uh, noise on top of the sensory nerves is just one of many problems. Diabetes, there's going to be all kinds of other things going on. If it's got as far as to have peripheral neuropathy, there's going to be huge immune system problems. There's going to be fragile skin. There's going to be uh, large uh, vessel disease and, um, uh, and the problems of hard skin callusing. So this is almost, you know, in any case where there's uh, neurop neuropathy, um, it's, this is really an adjunct, uh, something to bear in mind when you're dealing with a variety of other conditions. One of the big uh, problems and one of the big enemies of uh, having a peripheral neuropathy is getting a stone in your shoe. And so one of the most important strategies is to create, here we've done it out of neoprene, I've cut a strip from the block and I've carved it to have a rounded shape so that it's round on the outside but fairly firm against the quarter of the last. And we cover that in like a soft clothing leather. This is a piece of really nice chamois lining leather. But you can see how that clings to the edge of the foot and uh, makes it much more unlikely that a stone will go down there. If a stone goes down and you have peripheral, peripheral neuropathy, you won't know it's there. Most of you have had a stone go down your shoe and you know the first thing you want to do is stop, get your shoe off and get that stone out of there because it hurts. And the reason it hurts is it's damaging your foot. If you can't feel it hurting, it will damage your foot. In fact, it can cause amputation. Another thing that happens, and this is another good reason for the full contact insole, but also for a wide, broad heel, is that when we walk, and we don't even know we're doing this, say we're walking a long distance, say we're walking five, six, ten miles, whatever's a long distance for you. As you walk along, your muscles get tired and your foot begins to change shape. And so we sense that, and so we walk in a slightly different way. And then we sense that getting tired and we walk in a different way again. And if any part of our foot is getting sore, we walk in a way, we change the way we walk in a way that prevents that soreness uh, developing. If you don't have that feedback, then you walk in one way. You just walk in one way, it starts to cause pain, you don't notice the pain, so you continue walking in that same way until next thing you know you take your shoes off and you have you know, an, a developing ulcer, uh, which can uh, open you, if you've got diabetes, open you to infection because your immune system is hugely compromised. So the problem with, uh, with this isn't just the, uh, that you might damage your skin, but your immune system is hugely compromised and that's where the problems arise. You don't heal quickly. So the broad base also helps you stabilize, particularly if MS, if your foot is being held strongly, then you know that there's a broad heel underneath you. So those are the things that we're dealing with. We've got a, a, sense, a problem of sensing where damage is being done and, uh, a, and a need to protect the foot and contain it and give it a, wherever we can, a, you know, with the, the sensory nerves are still operating in the back part of the foot or with MS, then we, a feeling that you know where it is. And the final thing is, if you have a peripheral neuropathy, it's really important to check your feet, probably twice a day if you're walking around, to make sure that no damage is being done. So you don't want the kind of shoe where you're thinking, I should really check my feet, but oh, it's such a palaver to get them on and off. Make it easy to get the shoe off and on. So, you know, Velcro again, rather than laces, because you've probably got, if you've got peripheral neuropathy in your feet, you've got it in your hands. So Velcro, or you don't want a slip-on shoe, because a slip-on shoe is, is always on the edge of slipping off. Because that's why it's slip-on. So you need to have some kind of Velcro to hold the, the shoe on. Make it easy just to take it out, look at your foot and examine your foot with your eye to make sure there's no damage being done. So make the taking off of the shoe a very easy process. So that's it for anesthetic feet.